So we've had a couple false starts. We've been trying to film a video of my process when it comes to making my sleeve takedowns, my two-piece bows. So today we're going to go ahead and film this here bow here. This is a birthday bow that has to be shipped by the end of May. And it is a cross between a Wolf Creek and a Rio Bravo in the original long curve. Uh, it's going to be a pretty cool looking bow. And I do not spar these because they have a cap of solid FR4. So that's plenty of strength. All that will be will remain in the tenon. So I don't have to spar these and they'll be plenty strong enough. This one is 55 pounds at 29 inches. So we're going to run through the whole process of two-piecing a recurve, a 50-style recurve, using the socket and tenon method of a sleeve takedown. So let's get started. First thing I'll do is find my center line. So I've got about an inch and seven sixteenths, so half of a be three quarter and a thirty second under three quarters. So right there, right there. Double check my measurement. It's perfect and it's perfect. So I'll just grab a straight edge here. Extend that line on out. If I can find my line, there it is. Okay, once I have my center line, whoops. No, I went off of something that I thought was the line. It's not the line. So we'll have to correct that real quick. Why well, you gotta always double check yourself constantly. That's the line right there. Makes a big difference. See that right there? That's like an eighth of an inch almost. So we can't have that kind of stuff going on. All right. So here's my shelf line. So just for reference, I'm going to put a mark there. Now, this is my correct line. So now just under the shelf, I'm going to go three eighths on each side, which three eighths plus three eighths is three quarter, which is what I like my tenons to be. They're usually a little smaller than that when I'm done sanding, which is what I prefer, but I start them out about three quarter. And then, cause if they're too big, you don't want to run the risk of taking too much material off and then you don't have full integrity of your socket portion full thickness you lose your strength okay so that's the sides of my tenon now i'll go ahead and extend those lines and then i'll show you what i mean here okay run those up Okay, and run that up. Okay, now I double check everything. So if I put that, you can see that's dead on and three quarters of an inch. Over here, dead on three quarters of an inch. Now, sometimes I double check myself. I've got five sixteenths from the edge. Five sixteenths, five sixteenths, hair over. So that's perfect. Okay. So we got the back side laid out. Now we'll go ahead and flip it over. And on the original long curves, it's different than a long bow. When you're doing a socket and tenon, you want to have the shape of the bow follow the shoulder of your tenon. That may be a little bit hard to understand or for me to explain right now. On a reflex deflex long bow, you know, when you have the bow coming in like this, you know, where it comes in like this into the riser, that shoulder needs to be a 90 with that angle of that riser. On a long curve, it's not as picky because it comes into the tenon pretty much straight. So you don't have to be as precise, but on a longbow, it's very important. And because if you don't align that shoulder with the angle of the riser approaching the shoulder, you put stress on the the point of adhesion where that shoulder or that sleeve of fiberglass, carbon and resin make contact with the bow. And that tends to start a little hairline crack, which that can be fixed, but we can avoid that by making the proper shoulder here. So first thing we'll do is 
I, I put all of my shoulders one half inch underneath the shelf because I want it pretty high up. Well, now, when this shelf gets radius, you know, you're going to be dropping about half of this distance over here. This is going to stay the same, but you want enough to, for the leather grip to cover that. But you want it as close and high to the shelf as possible. The reason I'm saying all this stuff is because I, um, I've had a lot of requests from other bowyers to show how I do it, and I know they're going to want to know some of these things. So that's why I'm explaining it in detail. So on a long curve, on a long bow, I make the, t the, the socket and tenon three inches. On an original long curve, I'm going to go a little bit longer, just for just a little bit more mass and strength, though. So that would be three inches. So we're going to go about three and let's see here. On the swift long curves, I go about three and a half. But I think I'm going to go three and a quarter on this one. Yeah, that looks good. Let's double check it. It is three and a quarter. So because this, this kind of comes in at a 90, I don't have to worry as much about putting that shoulder on an angle. So I'm going to square off of the belly side of the riser instead of the back. On a longbow, I'll square off the back to get that angled a little bit. Okay. Square it there. And square it here. Stand the light. Now I will measure the depth of my tenon on the throat, which is inch and a half. Here, it's inch and three quarter. So this is very important. That little bit right there, that's how thick that glass and carbon and resin is going to be. We don't want to compromise that. That's about how thick it needs to be. Plenty of strength if it stays that thick. Not so much if it gets shaved down. So we got to keep that real good. Okay. Straight edge to go ahead and match this up. Draw a line there. Okay. Now we will go ahead and extend these shoulder lines all the way around. And the way you do that is you make little lines coming off of here on these sides. You can eye down this line, line that up. Okay, so I've extended those. Now, this, even this is kind of important how you do this because you can kind of mess it up. So we're going to square off of here, draw that line across, making sure that I eye down this here line going down, making sure that's all straight. Okay. Now we do not draw this line yet. We flip it over. Do the same thing here. Extend these lines across off of our original shoulder line. Okay, now this is important. This here line, so we've got three sides done. This is our original. We extended it here, extended it here. You cannot square this line. It will not match up and it doesn't need to. Well, sometimes it will, but it's, it's not important for it to it, it's very important for the line to match up, but it's not important to square this here offside line because the shoulder don't care. It's more important about it lining up. So that's why you draw little lines there to extend them, just so you can see them. Just like that. And now we do not use a square. Instead, we use a straight edge and we just connect these lines and that will make a perfect job of a beautiful shoulder. It may not be perfectly square on this offside, but it does not have to be. It's more important that the shoulder is the same, it is connected all the way around. You don't want to step off just because little imperfections in squaring. So now let's double check it and see how square it actually is. So you can see it's not. It's not square on the offside, but that really, that just doesn't matter. Let's look at this one. See, same thing. Does not matter, but very important that they all are lined up all the way around.
Okay, so after that's done, we are ready to cut our shoulders in with a hacksaw. And we will start, let's see, I like to start on the narrower side. So we'll start like this. Now, for ease of filming this, I'm going to go ahead and cut from this side. I don't normally do this, but I but there's not enough room for the camera on the other side. So that's why I'm going to cut them from that side. Okay, cutting straight with a hacksaw can seem like a challenge. You just start right there where you want to be conscious of where your blade goes. So... You don't want the blade on this side because this is the waist portion here. So start it there. You start with the corner and then you just extend it as you deepen using the line for reference. Let's extend it all the way and that's how you start a, a straight cut line. So you can see, you can see just the edge of that line all the way on that hacksaw line. Now I just go down and I angle my blade whichever way I need to to stay on that side, just, just kissing that line. The top shoulder underneath the shelf is not that important to get straight. That, that will become apparent as we go along. Now the, the lower side on the bottom of the sleeve is very important. So you let the saw do the work. You don't really push hard on it. Just let it drop in using short, fast strokes kind of. So, all right, there we are. So we're down there to our line. So we'll do this side. Now the waist is here. So we'll use, we'll put the blade on the inside, on the left side, where it was on the right side before. So once again, start at the corner, extend it along. Now we don't have to go very deep here. So we're just going to drop it right onto our line. Almost there. Okay, good. We're touching the line. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now I showed you kind of how to do that. We're gonna do the same thing and I'll film it from the other side this time because I don't need to. Now I don't draw a line here. I just measure it because this can vary kind of like you can see here, you know, I've got a big dip here. So I don't really want to draw a line there. So once again on the inside, so where the waist is, start on the corner extend it on along to make it straight just like that and go ahead and sink that down now what we're looking for here is about 3 16 because the finished depth is going to be a quarter but you'll do that with your sanders and grinders we don't want to go too deep that that would be a problem so we're only going to run this saw down about 3 16 of an inch Okay, I'm gonna quick measure that. Not quite there. Sometimes you can use your layers too. You just kind of see where 3 16 comes. And in this particular case, it goes down to the red layer. So that's simple. I can just cut to the red layer, which is Padauk. This one has a Padauk core. So I'm almost there. I kind of, this may seem like it's taken a lot of time. It is because I'm explaining it, but this, the more precise you are when making a socket and tenon, every step, however precise you are on the preceding step, it all plays into creating the high quality tenon. So you just have to be precise 
when you're cutting a bow in half and careful. Okay, so I'm just touching the red there. I'm just touching the red there, so I'll stop. These are somewhat landmarks also because we can do a lot with our grinders more precisely than a hacksaw. Almost there. Wait, that one is... Nope, not there yet. So when you're hacksaw on this shoulder, one thing that you're trying to avoid is doing a bad job with the hacksaw to where you have a ledge, a hacksaw ledge, because that just adds more work when you're cleaning up that shoulder. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to try my best not to add one. Sometimes it happens even if you try your best. Okay, that's deep enough. Okay. Now there's a very specific reason that I did that I cut the, the short sides first because this is a longer cut, but see now I, I, I have a shorter distance. I kind of narrowed that up to basically the same size as this. Whereas if I would have started here, I would have had a lot longer distance starting and there's more chance of the blade getting sloppy in it and wobbling. So now instead of using the lines, I can just put that blade in those, in those lines I cut and it's a lot more accurate. On this one, I'm gonna use these lines I drew and I'm, I'm going to stay about a 30 second away from them. The last thing you want is a little cut into your tenon, and it's really hard to get out. But you can always stay away and grind down with, with your files or whatever tool you're using. So I'll put that toward me. So now I'm going to put that right in that cut, and then I'll just start extending it out along that line. When I get about halfway there, I'll go to this cut, keep extending them, keep extending them back and forth till you meet, and then you've got a straight line with a hacksaw. Okay, now this is really important because like I said, I want to stay about a 30 second away from the, the sides of my tenon, these lines I drew here. So while I'm cutting, I'm watching the reveal of the blade and I'm, okay. I'm keeping that reveal um, the same so that that blade is straight. Okay, let's look at that. We'll blow that out and we'll just sight down there. We're almost there. So, another thing is with not going all the way to the line, if you end up with just a little bit of a rolled inside corner uh, radius on your tenon, that's great. It looks great. And that's fine, so we don't care about that. I definitely want to try to get this here line and not make a step off, a hacksaw blade step off. Almost kind of want to make one just to show you what it looks like and what to avoid. Once again, I'm being ultra picky on this. Getting close. Okay, that's good. Okay, so I did kind of make a step off. Not a big deal if you do it. It's really hard to not do it. So right here is what I'm talking about. You see how I cut in just a little bit there? So that makes my job just a little more difficult to square that shoulder. And I try not to do that, and I can actually do it. I'll do the other side, and I won't do it. But I wanted to kind of show what that looks like. And it just adds 
a couple minutes to you squaring up the shoulder. So if you can avoid it, don't do it. But it's not the end of the world. See, you see it right there. It's like a little step, little step down. So ideally, this here shoulder of this tenon will be perfectly square. So I'm not going to film the other side because I just showed you how to do it. So we'll pick you up after I get this done. Okay, we're over here at the bandsaw. I've got my shoulders all cut. Now we're going to remove as much waste as we can to reduce the amount of time we got to grind. So uh, let's do that first. So you'll notice here, you know, I cut outside the lines quite a bit. You definitely don't want to cut on the lines. You want to cut outside those so that then you bring it on down to final size with the grinders. So now I'll just slice this off real carefully and then we'll go start with the grinders. Okay, so now we've got the rough material moved off and we don't need to do anything with this right now. So we'll head over to the knife grinder and we'll clean up that tenon. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that's my throat line. That's the absolute line where I'll wrap, um, well, when I carve it, it'll go to. So you want that about 3 16 overhang there. That's important to leave that there. You don't want to cut with your bandsaw up to here when you're creating that little overhang underneath the shell on the throat of the bow. Okay, over here at the 2x72 knife grinder, flip off the 220 belt that we were using to sharpen our knives, and we'll put us on a 40 grit belt running this way. Okay, so I'm just going to start right here. Now, you can see right here, I nicked that a little bit with my bandsaw, but um, it's not a problem because I, here you can see that step off I was telling you about. Um, that's not a bad one, but you'll see why that causes just a little bit extra work. I'm going to move that out a bit. Every previous step, however well the previous step is done, makes the next step that much easier. It's a constant progression, so that'll be on top of your game. Okay, so when I'm doing this, you can see I left, I stayed away from this here line, but that's that cut in I was telling you about. If you go too deep, you've got to get that cut in out right there, and it's, it's a pain in the butt. So that's why you stay away a little bit from that. I'm going to move this over just a hair, and we're going to get in there.
Okay, there I've completely taken it out. So now I'm going to sight down here and I want the reveal the same, the reveal of the shoulder. So over here, I'm sitting at just a 30 second under three eighths. And here I'm just a little bit less. So I want that to be the same. You don't have to measure that. You can eyeball that in, that's perfectly fine. Um, but I'm just kind of showing you what I do here. Okay, so I've got that edge cleaned up. Now I'll flip it on the same side and I'll clean this edge up. Okay, I've got that side done. Looks beautiful. Flip it over. We'll start on the other side. If you don't have one of these machines, um, you can do it with a file going to take a lot of work however if you have a harbor freight you can get one of these little dudes and they make a bigger one it'll take a lot longer but you can get it done with that too Okay, so what I do is I look down here and I can see I've got a little more reveal on that side. That's okay, because we're still, we're still over three quarters of an inch, so we're okay. Um, so I'll go ahead and clean this other side up and parallel it. Okay, that's looking real good. Now, when I look at this, I'm gonna measure this. I got about three eighths, a little under, so I'll take just a hair more off up here. Okay, looking pretty good. Those are relatively the same. Yeah, good enough, just leave it, Shane. Yeah, I like it. Now we'll do this here. Now we can use these lev these layers here to get it perfect, and a quarter inch comes to about halfway through that red lamination. So we'll we'll kind of do that. Okay, what I did is I straightened that tenon. That's gonna work better because the way this bow naturally has an indentation there and that's for your little finger. So I straightened that and that's gonna work a lot better for the tenon. Yeah, that, that's much better. Okay, last side to clean up.
Okay, now this is super, super important right here. You want this to be almost parallel, but you want up here to be just a tiny little bit narrower. And when I say tiny bit, I mean like a 64 um, narrower. So we're gonna measure that and that. So right now it's about a 64th inch narrower. Um, but I also want these to be basically parallel. You cut, you want these to be parallel. If this is on an angle like this, when you go to string it, the bow will slip out by itself. That's a catastrophe. Do not want that to happen. The way you get around that is by making this pretty much parallel in line with the bow. So if you look at that, you can see you can see it's just a little bit like that right now. So I know I'm being really detailed here, but if you guys, if, if you're trying to do this, I want you to have success the first time. So I'm gonna take just a little bit off of there. We can fine tune the taper of it with our files. Okay, so now let's take a look at that. That's a lot better. So now we've got, up here, we've got inch and three eighths. Oh, that's perfect. It's about a 64th. So we've got our shape of our tenon. So now we'll roll all the edges. So we'll just come in here and we'll carefully roll these edges. You can do this on the with hand tools. I do it with this machine because it saves me a lot of time but you can do it with hand tools. Make a nice pleasing outside radius on your tenon so it looks really good. So this is what you're gonna see when you pull it apart. Okay, I like that. Now we'll flip it over and we'll do these. I'm good with that. Okay, ten and all cleaned up beautifully. I run my angles. I used to run them at a 45. I have found that a 45 is not a very good angle for your cut in your socket and tenon. 30 degrees is a lot better. So I had made this little jig and the green part goes to the shoulder. And so what we need to find is the center. And so half of uh, three and a quarter is inch and five eighths. So we'll draw a line there inch and five eighths and then we just come across right across there we've got inch and three eighths so that's eleven sixteenths half of that so we've got our cross cross hairs there okay put the the bottom side this is the bottom okay that goes right up against our shoulder nice and square and then we move that to where the ballpoint pin can go in there, leaving room for the pin, and hit those crosshairs right on the center, just like that. And then I'll go ahead and extend that by lining it up all pretty and extend that line on out. Okay. So that is our cut line. So now I can double check it. Yep, perfect. I double check the bottom, double check the top. Lovely. Okay, now when it comes to this part, I'm gonna cut this. Now you'll see some bowyers use jigs to cut this. It, in my opinion, is a complete waste of time. Now there's nothing wrong with using a jig and if it helps you get it straighter go for it but 
honestly, you can get it just as straight freehanding it and just taking your time on a bandsaw. So that's what I'm gonna do. So what I do, set this down so you don't get as much blade movement, but not a long ways down because you wanna be able to see it. Then I grab my little stool. And then I put my air protection on. And I'm just gonna start the cut and then once I have it, I'm gonna eye it in. I'm gonna sit on this stool. I'm gonna eye this thing in perfectly. Once I have it started, then I'll stand up and I'll cut the rest of it. And, and it doesn't have to you go real slow. You only got this far to cut. So you go real slow and um, you can make it really straight. Okay, let's see how we did now. So we'll file that, but that's literally perfectly straight. That's not gonna take, you know, we'll clean it up with the file and it's gonna just be so fast. It's gonna be so easy. Okay, so here we are over at the vise. We've got them clamped in here and we're gonna go ahead and cap these tenons. Very important step, do not skip it. You've got end grain that you just exposed. It, you don't want moisture or anything getting in that because if you swell that tannin, it's not gonna fit in the sleeve. So really, really important. And what I'm using today is black glass. It works really good. You can use G10, FR4, anything that is a, a component that is not affected by moisture. So one of these sides of these pieces is the factory edge and it's straight. So I can use that to see how straight I am. So a lot of times um, on the end of a cut on a bandsaw, you have just a little lip there where there's not enough uh, force of the piece to prevent it from leaving just a little edge. So we'll clean that up. And plus we got to clean off this little black burnt stuff because glue won't stick to that. It's slick. So let me grab my file here, right here. And I'll come in from this side and I'm gonna keep this file flat because I know I have a flat square surface right now. And I'm just gonna use the discoloration um, to, to mark my progress as I file this. So, see, you can see I'm taking more off here, so I need to take a little more off here. So that's gonna tell me if I'm keeping my file straight as I go. Now the bottom one is a lot more important, the bottom tannin, is a lot more important than the top because the bottom one is what you're going to take out, you know, in and out as you take your bow down and you want that one to be perfect as far as square and no gaps in your cap as far as glue joints go. So I like can see it's, it's just the natural pressure of the way my hands are. I'm putting more pressure on this side. So now I'm going to switch over here come in on this side just so I can make it uniform just the way that it looks that's how I know I'm keeping my file flat and you just want the edges to be flat you don't care as much about the middle because you won't see that and I'll show you how I'm going to rough this okay so let's take a look at it so that is absolutely perfectly flat and square so now we'll do this one. This is the top tannin, the one right under the shelf, not as picky. 
not as important for it to be, but you still want to do a good job because I don't think you could, this cap, once it's wrapped, there's no way this cap can ever even come off. I've never, ever had one come off because it's locked in there. But you still want to practice your good workmanship principles and get it perfect. So using, once again, using my discoloration to get it square. Now I'll go ahead and see if it's square. And it is, it's perfect. Now, you see there's a little bit of black in there, so we're going to scuff that. And while we're gonna do that, I'm just gonna take a Dremel. You don't have to use a Dremel. You can use anything that you can think of to scuff this surface up, but that glue has to have adhesion properties, good adhesion properties. So this is, do not skip this step. We'll come in here. Now stay away from this edge. If this goes to the edge, you're going to have a little void there. So you don't want that. Go up to it, but stay away from it. Okay, we're just really gouging that out so that it sticks good. Okay, that's done, we'll blow it off. And we're ready for glue. Before I glue these, I preheat them. So I want really good adhesion over the whole thing. You wanna get them too hot because your glue will flash cure and then you can't move it around. We're just gonna preheat those. Just give them a little bit of warmth. Maybe about 100 degrees. Okay, I gotta go grab the medium CA from over here. Okay. So you can either use medium or thick CA. Do not use thin. It's, it, uh, it's, not, it's not strong enough. So what we'll do, grab one more piece, make sure. I pre-roughed these, I built a whole stack of them. So we're just gonna come up here, make sure you have an even coat. And I don't go quite to the edge because it'll squeeze out and then that prevents, you know, it's gonna have squeeze out anyway, but I don't want a huge amount of squeeze out. Okay, I'm gonna set that on there, square it up so that it's covering all the edges. Now put even, pressure on it and I'll hit it with my accelerator now if you don't have accelerator before I used to use accelerator before I used accelerator I would just I would heat them up a little hotter and then just hold these with good solid pressure for about 10 minutes and it's kind of boring but it will glue down nice and tight if you do that but with accelerator I don't have to do that I just go ahead and hit that edge there and that's good. Okay, now we'll do the other side. You don't want any dry patches in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna come around here, stick this one on. If you're using glass, you just have to be careful that you don't put excessive pressure on the edge, you know, on the edge of this glass outside of the tenon area, because that glass can break off there. So. Okay, now I put a little pressure here and just hit that with accelerator. Now, because I'm gonna go right into shaping these, I'm gonna do a method that I use in the bow shop constantly um, where I heat it and then cold set it. And that will make glue harden up. You can do this with EA40, any type of glue, really. Um, so what I'll do is I'll heat it. 
get it, and now I'll get it probably more like 150 degrees. And what this is going to do is this is going to uh, cure up that glue in the middle underneath there that the accelerator can't reach. So we'll get it nice and toasty. That's good. Do this one. And I don't know the actual physics of this method. All I know is that it works and it works very well. I'm sure somebody watching this could say, well, this is why it works. But um, for some reason, uh, this works really good. And, and what I'm talking about is heating up this pretty hot, but then cooling it down rapidly. You know, I know how that works with metal, but I'm not sure the, the physics of it on glue, but this is what I do. And then I just come in here and I cool this really cold air, compressed air. See, that's cool to the touch. And I know this works because I've done this on, on other items and then I've accidentally broke them. And um, when I've looked at them, that glue is cured and hard all the way through. So I call it cold set method. Okay. All right, let's go clean these tannins up. We've cold set the glue. We're just gonna go clean the edges up real quick. Take a quick look at that and make sure that's, oh yeah, that's all dry. Back to the knife grinder. Here again, if you don't have one of these, you could use a file to clear this up, clean this up, or you could buy one of these cheapy cheapies from Harbor Freight. <laughs> I leave the corners for last as far as rounding them. I clean this all up and then I carefully come in here and do all four corners at the same time. That way it kind of, you get in the mode of doing corners and you can do a better job on them. This is also where I check to make sure it's glued down good and it is. Gently hit those. Check to make sure that I got them square. Okay. Looks really good. Okay, we'll do the other one. I won't film that because you've already seen it. Okay, here we've got the top tenon. This is a lot quicker to do this one. So this one, you know, I'm tired of not having ear protection. So... This one we're going to groove out around here and that's going to allow that glass and resin and carbon to go inside basically up into the riser a bit and really gain some significant purchase. But we're going to leave the integrity of this outside edge intact and I found this is the best way to do it that uh, will give you the strongest um, tensile elongation up against the top of the riser so let's do that.
So when I go, when I do this side, I cut into this because it acts sort of like a, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of a ledge for that, that glass and carbon to just grab a hold of and, and hold tight. See, I've got that all dished out. If you can, if you can see that here, you can see I've created a dish for that to go up in there, and I've got a little ledge right here for it to hold. So now we're going to score the sides of this aggressively. Okay, I'm going to give it one more lead here to grab onto. Okay. That is a properly roughed up tenon ready for glue. This doesn't get anything on it, so we can leave it just like that. But you can see there's a lot of area that can be get get purchased on that resin and glass and carbon and that's what we're after just really aggressively notched and gouged okay we're going to charge our equipment up and then we will wrap it for you show you how to finish it